Hey, everybody, Eric Chesson, founder of Autism Fitness, leading the movement for movement. And if you are ready to become an Autism Fitness certified pro and bring the best possible fitness and adapted PE programs to the home, school, gym, classroom, clinic, wherever you're at, then head on over. The link is in the video description below to autismfitness.com. Register and start your course today and then meet with me live virtually for one of the upcoming virtual hands-on practicals where you get the hands-on feed on brains on training that you and your athlete or athletes deserve. So <clears throat> in this Tuesday training, excuse me, what we're going to be looking at um, are some interesting aberrant behaviors that we often see um, that, that tend to have a neurological origin with um, the autism population. And with our athletes who are demonstrating or exhibiting some of these behaviors, oftentimes there is immediate impulse to try to do something about it. And there is a key here. And that key is that sometimes the best thing to do is nothing or not so much nothing as in being completely passive, but just waiting it out until the athlete is ready to perform. There are certain aspects um, of the uh, of observable behavior that are going to be behavioral that are going to be governed by um by abilities and processes that the athlete is is capable of either changing or or modifying or they have some type of of control in whether or not they're exhibiting those behaviors Sometimes our athletes exhibit behaviors that they don't have control over. And oftentimes these can be confusing to us. And we may not necessarily know whether it is behavioral or, or strictly neurological in origin. So let me show you here what I'm talking about with my guy Z here. So we're going to start and he's going to do an overhead band walk. So setting him up here. And we've got good position. Now, you notice in the start where he's at right now, he can get his arms up. We want his arms a little bit farther back and stretched over his head. So you can see one of the things, and this is what you'll learn in the level one course, is I am prompting his arms directly overhead because we want that thoracic mobility and we want that shoulder activation. And that's not going to happen as much certainly if he is keeping his arms forward as opposed to over his head. And these are the details that make a big difference. Moving on here um, as, as he is prompted into position. So right here, there's a little readjustment. So now he's in a great position. And right here, so you see this head tilt back and forward, uh, back and forth. So right to left, right to left, right to left. And if we're, co if we're coaching straight out of impulse, obviously we want him to continue with that overhead band walk. However, in this situation, there are highly competing factors. And from working with him for quite some time now and, and knowing some of his background, this is not something, this is not a behavior that he can control. So what I am doing and what we are doing is just as important, or let me spin that back, what we're not doing is as important sometimes as what we could be doing, right? So in this case, I could start with verbal prompts that are going to either make no difference or are going to be ultimately de detrimental and more of a stressor to him as well. So I might... So uh, if I were doing this incorrectly, because there are plenty of ways to do this incorrectly, I would be saying things like, oh, come on and focus and or, you know, get it together or all of these nonsensical things that we just want to say because we need to say something. In this situation, there's absolutely nothing to say, nothing to do until the athlete is focused again, until he's he's available to be coached. So that's exactly what I'm doing here is nothing. I'm going to wait it out because right now the behavior is superseding the performance. We are not going to get performance out of this athlete right now. And that's fine. This is not a judgment call. It's just what's going on right now. So we see this head shake back and forth right now. 
and he's not available. It's going to take some time, right? And then he's ready again. So we reprompt, or I reprompt, and he's ready to go again, right? So you see those hands are a little bit forward. He needs some more prompting there. Getting a little distracted here. So you can see the difference between something that he has more control over, you know, getting distracted by whatever he's getting distracted by over there, and that neurological tip that we saw earlier. I have no idea what was so fascinating over there. But we reset, and the key here is, again, the language that I am not using. I am not going to overwhelm an athlete with language when they need some time to reset or collect themselves. And you can see this overhead band walk now is pretty good, still needs a prompt. It's not like it's 100% independent right there. But the key point is we always have this hierarchy of what's going on with our athlete. Sometimes when our athlete is on task and focused and ready to go, we can 100% focus on their physical performance. When we have a situation where that is compromised, either via some ne neurological tick or some other maladaptive or off-task behavior, that is going to become the primary focus, at least in the short term. The more focused the athlete is, and this comes directly back to the PAC profile and the level one certification and all the things that you get in there, we're not always considering performance or physical performance as the primary objective, especially in a situation like this. Sometimes we have to wait it out for our athlete to self-regulate and be back to a more relaxed focus point where they can perform to the best of their ability, where they're motivated to perform to the best of their ability as well. And the reason why it's so important to show something like this is it's exceedingly common among the autism and neuroadaptive population. So when you're coaching, it's often the case that the less language you're using and just waiting it out is going to be really helpful, especially if it's a new behavior or something you've never seen before. We don't necessarily want to call attention to it as well. Finally, and, and just as important as some of the other things I've mentioned here, is that this is the reason why we do a lot of the same exercises over and over and over again, because in that situation, we're not really gonna get a training effect out of that overhead band walk. Now, granted, it's a warm up exercise, so it's not necessarily going to build a lot of strength, but we do get that, that shoulder stability and we get that thoracic uh, mobility out of it as well. There's no reason to do six other exercises when right now we really need to focus on this one skill and this, this one quality of, of movement and stability. So we're just gonna keep doing the overhead band walk because the, the more sets and repetition, well, sets, it's a single repetition, the more of that he gets, the more he's gonna be able to, to master it independently and the more it's going to have that training effect in benefiting the muscles and, and, and joints that it's supposed to benefit. It's only gonna do that if we have enough time and enough practice with it. So it, it's definitely a buffer against doing eight other mobility exercises or 10 other mobility exercises. You have to take it into consideration how adept is the athlete at performing that particular exercise? How much time are they, are, are they being given an opportunity to practice that? And at what level of performance, whether uh, progressed or modified, are they currently performing that exercise, right? So again, the, the three here to take away are number one, sometimes waiting is the best practice. Number two, we want to set our athletes up for success with a prompt that doesn't interfere with what's going on right now and wait until they are self-regulated and focused again. And three, again, we wanna focus with the same exercises that we know are going to have the greatest benefit for our athlete. So that's been your Tuesday training. I'm Eric Chesson, founder of Autism Fitness. If you are ready to join the movement for movement, head on over to autismfitness.com and you can register now to become a certified pro.